Hey, I can't hear you yet. <laughs> you can't hear me. You. <laughs> okay, wait one second. Um. Ah, I can hear you. Yes, perfect, perfect. Yay! Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and hello and welcome to another episode of Buckle Up. This is the lockdown edition and uh, obviously uh, I usually have my guest with me in the car and we are cruising in the streets of Dubai so far. We're going to go international inshallah soon. But man oh man, this sister right here to my left or wherever you're watching, she is incredible. She's someone I met actually for the first time on the Jay Shetty sh um, you know, show uh, when he came to, to Dubai. Uh, she is actually uh, the radio host of Channel 4 Breakfast 104.8 FM which broadcast throughout you know, the UAE and the world. Uh, she's somebody who's really, really working hard. She has her own media company, Now Me Media, and her podcast is amazing as well. Um, Everything Legit, the Nimi Meta podcast. And man, oh man, welcome and peace and love to Buckle Up. Oh, wow. Thank you. What an intro. Nah, you know, like you deserve <laughs> way, way much more, much more. But that's why I want to get to know you. The reason why I did this, fam, is that when I first met you at the, at, at, you know, at the J event, it was just incredible. Your vibe is amazing. And I just love, you know, connecting with my brothers and sisters that work on the same field radio. Um, mm. So I want to know how is it like for you? First of all, thank you so much for your time. Really blessings and peace. You, you're, you're in the UK right now. Yeah, I'm in the UK. I'm so, so blessed right now to be with my family and friends during this time. You know, you really realize uh, yeah. how important it is. So, yeah, I'm in the UK right now. Hopefully, inshallah, getting back to Dubai soon once borders open up. Oh, I'm kind of stuck over here. Yeah. But no, more than happy to give give you time. I mean, when 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 Big House messages you, you like, oh, you've got to be Yo, there. Come you on, fam. Turn up. Oh, my God, no. Yo, uh, no, I'm a big fan of your work, big fan of your, you know, uh, your radio, big fan of your personality, really, the way you engage, the way you interview people. So I'm definitely going to to learn a lot of things from you uh, I've already learned um, but I want to talk about your really young memories like young young Nimi childhood mm -hmm. Nimi like how was it how was it like you know um, you know obviously growing up what made you actually get into this whole broadcasting thing and uh, you know public speaking yeah it's it's actually quite ironic because if my mom was here right now she'd be like this girl like speaking to people, unreal. Um, wow. And it's funny actually, because during this quarantine time, we've been watching baby videos mm. when we were younger. Bless. And uh, you know, I say it's ironic that now I speak to a nation every single morning and I host stages to thousands of people because I still to this day, I'm such an introvert. And when I was younger, I was scared of people. Any mm. new person that would step into a room, I'd be terrified of them. I couldn't make eye contact. I would start crying. And that really, really stuck with me for a very long time. Wow. Even at university, you know, there was this, I had this persona of a shell around me and I would never give myself to anyone. Mm. I would never show my personality because I don't know. I, I guess now through a lot of healing that I've done with myself, it's, I was, I, I guess I was just protecting myself. It was like a defense mechanism of, wow. of some sort. What, do you remember the moment where that kind of, kind of, kind of broke through? Yeah, it was straight after university. I did a, a media journalism degree and I decided I want to get into like print broadcast journalism, but I didn't know quite know how to start. And that's when I started uh, making my own content on YouTube. And it took me so much because you know, there's haters out there. There's people that will try to bring you down, especially at that age. You know, we're not very aware of what's going on and how important it is to support one another. Mm. And I used to get calls from people I considered friends, like prank calls telling me how bad I am and who do I think I am. What? Putting YouTube videos out there, you know. Oh, are you the Nimi Meta? Are you the Nimi Meta? And I was getting like 10 views on my YouTube video, right? And as you know, it takes a lot to put content out there. Yeah. And I, I found myself like retracting back into my shell mm. uh, and I was like, no, but you've started this, you've put content out there, this is what you want to do, you have to believe in yourself. And that's when like, I mean, having family and uh, like your close knit circle, your mom, your dad, that just like give you all the support that you need and all the confidence that you need, it just, it came through. Shout out to them, man. I, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm actually very vocal about this when parents really show love and show support, especially being a Arab, I'm from Saudi Arabia, for example, and especially when it comes to our sisters, there's a, there's, there's even a double push when, 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 
when doing what they want. So big up to them, really. Um, but but it's it's really incredible. You know, you you started your media career on TV at the age of 21, MTV UK. You know, in, in Saudi Arabia, we only we only had MTV like back then. Like we only had MTV to watch. But how did yeah. that like happen? And and what's what's your memory of it? Because my MTV is monumental for at least like our generation is very very important. Uh, Music, uh-huh. MTV. <laughs> Mental. I, I, I actually, um, you know, not a lot of people get to say that they have that on their like, CV, say, you know, or on yeah. their on their portfolio. And I just, I remember I came out of university. I was 21 years old, and I was like, I have no job. But what do I do? Do I just go into something that I I don't want to do just so I have some sort of income? And mm. you know, I I was in an, an incredibly blessed position where my parents were like, We've got you. Okay, like if you if you don't need to go out and work to do something that makes you unhappy, then don't. We've got you, and make sure you just make that job happen that you do do love to do. Yeah. And uh, still to this day, oh my goodness, if they hadn't have done that, I would not have kept pursuing what what I wanted. And um, and yeah, there was this like ad out that MTV are looking for a brand new presenter. They started a presenter search. Bam. And I was like. <laughs> That's me. Like without even a question, I, I, I'd already envisioned it. Has like I had already seen it happen, and manifestation is real. Like I sat there and I was going through that job ad, and I was like, they're literally talking directly to me. You had that. And confidence. you had. You had. Yeah. You had that. That's amazing. It was just that belief. It was, I don't know what it is from from day one. And my mom, again, if she was in this conversation, she'd tell you since, I think it was at the age of 11, I said this to her. And I said to her, mom, like, I have this, I just can't be no one. I can't be no one. I have to be someone. Mm. And when I say someone, I mean, someone could mean being a housewife, like, and providing for your children. As someone could be at a supermarket, you know, stocking those shelves and you're someone, no matter what, what you want to do. Right. Mm. I just meant someone that I have a message and I have a voice and I know that one day I'm going to be out there spreading that voice and spreading my messages. And she still says to this day, she's like, you're crazy girl. I can't believe you said this how, when you how were can you not? How can you not love, respect and appreciate someone like Nimi right now what what she just said is wow bless yeah. wow yeah so what did and you so like, then how, how was the yeah how was the mtv uk experience yeah so and then lots of applicants you had to submit a video all of these things and you had to get people to vote for you so mm. this is where i had to really come out of my shell because i was like wow i've got to connect with people and convince them that i'm good enough for this and they had to vote and eventually out of the whole country I mean, they say it was vote, but I think that they obviously chose themselves as well. Um, but I got chosen. And I remember the moment I was in the room with my sister and I got this email through and it was like, it was from this place called Talent House. And they said, dear Nimi, congratulations. You have been selected as the face and presenter of District oh. MTV, MTV UK. And I was like, what? <laughs> Like, no, I sat in silence and my sister was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I was in disbelief. I was like, surely not. They wouldn't just email me to say that. This must be someone like one of my haters fake emailing me. Wow. Like you start to doubt yourself, even though you believe, of course, doubts come through. And yeah. that moment, me and my sister got up, we started screaming, we were jumping up and down. And she was like, I knew it, I knew it. And then I got a call through from the girl and I said, hi, like, I just want to double check this is real. <laughs> like, this is legit, right? Wow. That this is actually happening. And she was like, it's 100% true. And and that experience was was amazing. I, I, I thought, I've made it. This is it. I've come straight out of university. And mm. oh my goodness, I've got this contract with MTV UK. And I remember when I watched MTV UK, I used to see this uh, lady called Jamila Jamil. Oh, um, who, oh. Right. What? Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh my so, God, of course, yeah. <laughs> so like for her, I mean, she's doing incredible now, like such a voice for women mm. and, and people all around the world. And I, I remember seeing her on MTV and I was like, oh my God, she looks like me. <laughs> oh my goodness, she has the same color skin as me. Oh my yeah. God, this could actually happen. Mm. And it was representation. And I was like, wow, that made me believe furthermore that I could do it. And so when I, yeah, when I did the gig and they took me to London Fashion Week and I did all these fancy things, I realized I'm still not evolved to the point where I should be personality wise out of my shell. Cause you know, you got to connect, you got to network, make those relationships. And I wasn't quite there yet. 
but I'm, I, I made the best of it and the year contract came to an end and mm. unfortunately District MTV it was their new venture it just wasn't working out because they were trying to mash fashion and music and all this yeah. stuff it didn't work out and there I was unemployed again wow and I was like wow like god like god and life will really really show you like you yeah. think you've done it you think you've made it or like made it and you're on the road and then it will knock you back down but it was such an experience and i'm, I'm so glad i had that under my belt we're, we're proud of you of course when when you were talking about it right now did you relive the, the the feeling like you know like how does that like that's amazing right like the fact that yeah. you were able to do it uh in 2015 you got into radio am i right Yes, correct. And, yeah. and how how was it from TV to radio? Because for me personally, I started I started blogging in 2007, and then you know uh, did my online radio, um, you know, in Saudi, and then joined official FM at 2010 in Saudi, and then started. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, it's always been this incredible mic. So, so the fact that you have a proper mic shows that you're a real radio. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just you know, uh, what was it about radio? Why why attracted to radio? You know, I was at such ease and still am to this day in front of the camera. I could do it in my sleep. And I was like, I still have so much to learn, but I'm so comfortable. And then I thought, Nimi, you need to diversify. I love challenges and I love challenging myself. And I was like, you need to do something you cannot do with ease. And so I joined this community radio station called Vibe FM in Watford and I was terrible. Oh my goodness, when I tell you, you I have no idea how. Well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's funny actually. I'm sure. You, uh, do you ever listen back to your old oh, stuff? Oh, I listen. And you're like, I, first of all, the the mistake I used to. I don't know. I'm like really loud, really loud. Like, I was like <laughs> today we are with Nimi, and she is. I'm like, yo, you don't need to be loud. That's the mic. You know. <laughs> yeah, like chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, I had like a squeaky voice, and you could hear how nervous I was, and <laughs> yeah. you know, I it was so hard to do because listen, you don't have your hands you don't have your facial expressions to get your message across and to get your energy across you've got this instrument and that's it and I found it so challenging and now like even to this day I'm learning new things but that was kind of the transition and I was like mm. wow I really love this radio thing it was never in my plan it wow. was never in, in even in my thought process but TV wasn't happening and I just wanted to diversify and, and, and it happened. And I was at this community station for not very long. And mm. then, boom, I was like, what? I'm in the UAE hosting a national breakfast show on Radio One. Damn. <laughs> like, it was kind of, I honestly, I look back and I'm like, I, to this day, don't think I deserved it because mm. As you know, being in, in, in the radio industry, there are so many people who've worked over 10 years to work for a national breakfast show. Yeah. And I felt I, like I was cheating the system and I felt bad because I was like, some people who probably deserve this more than me, who are more like radio geeks and, you know, and know mm. so much more about the industry should be here in my spot, but I'm here. So I need to just make the most of it. Like, cause you never know when this wave is going to crash. Right. So just wow. ride it. Thank you for sharing that. Actually. That's very, did you feel that you had to also prove yourself within like what, why you're doing it? You know, okay. I got the position right now, but I still want to prove it to myself that I deserve to be here. Yeah, it was it was more to myself. I mm. didn't I didn't feel like I had to prove it to anyone because no one really knew my background. You know, that was the, I guess the beauty of also coming to a different country <laughs> is that they just assumed you were in radio for years beforehand. I hear but you. no, I and I actually I'll share this story with you when I first um we went live on Radio 1 for the first time and there was pressure, right? Because yeah. a few months before it had all shut down and the presenters were gone and this was brand new and they were just playing music. And we did, it was kind of like a soft launch. We didn't really make that much noise about it. But I remember, every, all these, yeah. yeah, all these texts like in the studio, pressing all these buttons five seconds before I'm about to go live on national radio. And I was mm. freaking out and I was like, keep your cool, keep your cool. Just put the mic up and start talking. That's all you have to do, Nimi. And there you go. You see the countdown, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. I put the mic up and I'm talking. And one of the techs had switched it off. There was a technical issue and no one heard me when I was talking. 
and everyone and I speak to friends now who said that they tuned in for it and they were like yeah you you went live you could hear the production but you couldn't hear your voice and they said we were just laughing because we were like oh typical but I remember in that moment being so hard on myself I was Uh like well if you had more radio experience you would have known or you know you should have known that this wasn't going to work I I wouldn't have known even the most experienced uh, you know radio DJ wouldn't have known but that was a moment I was like you need to step your game up girl like I kept working I kept working practicing recording fake shows just (laughs) trying to improve myself you know you have an amazing vibe I I tell you that you know this is uh, your I think it's your energy uh, you know you uh, you, what you represent fam and I really want to talk about this obviously you know you grew up with little options of ethnic minority role models like you said er- earlier and you didn't see maybe somebody that you know represented you and now by the way you are that person to many uh, especially young um, <clears throat> you know girls or, or boys to represent mm-hmm. actually that so I think my question to you will be like using radio how how are you able to portray such a such an amazing message with radio with the mm-hmm. breakfast show which is, you know you got you're doing your thing but at the same time how how are they going parallel together Yeah I, you know it, it's really a conscious thing that I've done because you know, like I said, growing up, that I didn't, I didn't really have anyone to look up to until I saw Jamila Jamil. I didn't, I didn't see my dreams in anyone else, and so I made a conscious decision that this is exactly what I want to do for people. And you know, being on the radio is tough, especially. I mean, you know, there is, it's very censored, especially the, the part of the world that we're in compared to the UK or Australia. Sure. Um, not that that matters in any context of which what stuff I talk about anyway, but. I'm very conscious as well as well when I'm speaking on my show that I talk about my heritage and I speak mm. about my Indian background yes. and you know me getting married last year was such huge content contributed to the show because mm-hmm. also you know I'm aware of my audience and my marketplace as well 66% of of the UAE population are Indians and you yeah. know to reach out to them and, and to tell them like hey listen I'm your girl like I'm your I sister you. and I'm, I'm with yeah. yeah yeah that's wow so you gave me goosebumps by saying that i'll be very honest with you this is amazing to hear from you it's actually mm. very refreshing and i yeah. i think i might get maybe a backlash on this but when when i came here for example i saw a lot of you know obviously it's an expats you know especially dubai expat city i didn't see for example any any uh, you know little bit of arab you know for example for me i'm listening i'm listening to a lot of you know australians you know british and that's amazing you know that's incredible but i wouldn't relate to and there's a lot of people wouldn't relate the beautiful thing, though, is when you're talking about your experience, you're able to relate to the people, the same background. And there's yeah. nothing more beautiful um, than this when someone, you know, speaks the language and you're not like you're being you. But at the same time, yeah. you're reflecting. Uh, yeah. I, I just want to salute you for that because I think that is truly, truly something uh, Thank quite you. missing in, 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 in actually the world, and especially in this part um, uh, of the world. Uh, Nimi, you spoke about this uh, September 6, 2019. Did I get the date right? Yes. Oh, I have to check with my husband. I'm so bad at dates, but yes. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Yo, fam, I watched this. I mean, shout out to, uh, you know, Raj Katecha. He was also, sh- I follow the brother, you know. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Yo, yeah, that was amazing. You talked about it. It was like a, a national story. <laughs> Everyone was like, you know, following from everything that you're doing from, yo. But I mean, long story short, take us through the, the whole emotions of w- having people watch what you're going through. You know, yeah, <laughs> and oh, it's like the most know. important, you know, period of your life, and it's very, very personal. It is so personal, and again, it was a conscious decision. I thought about it, and I sat down with my husband as well, and we spoke. And shout out to I him, said, by the way, peace, man. Oh, oh, he's he's like in the other room. He's like, can I sit in? No, you're out. Um, but you know, it was it was something that I thought about because there is there is a line. Yes, when you're on the radio and when you're a public figure where you try to give majority of yourself to your people, to your followers, people who want to know more about you. Yes, there are some certain things that you like to keep private. uh, But with this, I just, I wouldn't be who I am and mm. I'm I'm so open on the radio I have a fight with my husband the night before the next morning I'm talking about it <laughs> because I'm like yeah. well it's real life yeah, and I, 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 I never have ever wanted to portray this glitzy glam like amazing life and yes we are in a blessed pr- privileged position where we get invited to events in Dubai and we live in an incredible city but I wanted to also show, show the raw authentic 
emotions and feelings behind this and and i thought i have to like i have to do this not not for myself like even if it gets one view 10 views like i don't care this was more of a documentation for people going through it and that's exactly when i launched my podcast as well yeah. and you know i'm in a long distance relationship mm. so we were planning for that wedding a long, in a long distance and and i speak about it and i'm like you know what if if me going through a really tough time in my relationship or in planning this wedding will help anyone one person out there i'm going to do it i'm not scared. i have nothing to hide and as long as my husband was okay with it that was yeah. the main thing and he's so supportive and he's like yeah. hey listen whether <laughs> whether whether you i agree or not you're going to set probably blurt it out anyway so just do you and, and, and speak your truth i think that's the most important thing i i i love that and and shout out to him really i think it's a uh, it's really amazing that you know um he's very supportive i you know i see him on your story really incredible um um yeah. you, you you said something they're very like man you're spitting gems gems today like that's you know there's <laughs> a lot um did you feel did you feel um kind of pressure to uh to, to live up to some sort of expectation that people have of you right now like as as nimi you, you, like i said your name is mashallah uh you know just just incredible and while you were saying i remembered an old bedouin uh saying it's a proverb mm -hmm. that um, i'll say it in arabic and translate it in the al insan alladhi la athara lahu la hayata lahu a human being with no impact has no trace has no life so you were able to impact you know people with your vibe with your personality with your energy with you being on radio with the podcast with just you showing yourself do you feel sometimes you think oh wow like you know uh, i'm really in a position to feel pressured or you take that in i i, I kind of thrive on it and wow. i <laughs> and yeah. with with making conscious decisions i kind of map out in my mind the vision of where it's going to go where i would like it to go yes it doesn't always go that way you know i could have had a backlash in terms of oh why are you why are you putting your wedding out there you're vlogging your wedding it's the most important part of your day i don't, I don't want to interrupt you here just quick because there are so many bloggers in the arab region that do that but they do it the extreme way I, I, mm. I'll be, and, and they're judged that way. I, I'm, I don't never do, but I mean other people. The way you did yeah. it though, Nimi, it was, I felt like I knew you. Like, you know, I know we met a couple of times, but I felt like, yo, she's letting me into her life. It was so welcoming. It was not yeah. bragging. It was mm -hmm. welcoming, if you need, if you mm. need another point. Well, see, that's what I was worried about. I was like, I, I was aware that, you know, I didn't want it to come off showy offy, like, oh, look at what I've got. It, that was never the intention. It was just like, as you saw in the vlogs and the content, it was more the raw emotion behind it yeah, and that. everything that I was going through. And <laughs> the message is, let me tell you, even to this day, I get the majority of my DMs from young Indian girls mm. who are like, I just, I love seeing you do what you do. It just makes me believe I can. I'm like, wow, that's yeah. what Jamila Jamil did for me. And now I'm that person and it's a huge responsibility. And I'm so conscious of it because I, I do not take it lightly. I take it very seriously. And I'm conscious of things that I post and, you know, I, I'm conscious of being a role model to people or just being someone that, you know, people are just consuming content from. I think all of us should be conscious of that no matter what your position is in life anyone could see it you know whether it's a 12 year old kid who's insecure introvert sitting at home doesn't know who to talk to they hear one of your podcasts and they're like oh my god you know i wrote this uh, letter to myself in my podcast mm -hmm. yet yeah, letter to my younger self and yeah. it's just like if I, if i had someone speaking to me and saying those things when i was that age oh my goodness and that's where like me going to schools now and mm -hmm. speaking to kids is beautiful so oh. that's what I'm saying. Your story is really incredible. Before we talk about the podcast, I want to ask you a question. So you host a lot of stages, mashallah. The way, the energy I've seen you host, it's incredible. Uh -huh. The energy is there. I feel it. And, and this is incredible. So if someone would, would, would kind of give you a choice between hosting or doing a podcast, and that's the mm -hmm. only choice, what? Which one would you choose and why? I know it's difficult. Believe me. Oh, you're killing me. I know. You're killing me. I know. I know. Um, give, give it. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Uh, um, wow. Because uh, you're buckled up right now. You're ready. It's just uh, <laughs> yeah, assumptions. I'm strapped in. Yeah. Um, I would say... It's tough. I would say hosting stages. Oh, uh, and let me I knew it. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because 
I am there. Like my experiences and hosting stages, especially with kids, has been unreal. And I, sitting face to face with these kids and seeing their facial expressions, the emotions behind it, who are they at home and who are they at school and oh, wow. who do they project themselves to be in the world. I always look back on my journey and I'm like, damn, I wish I had that mentality as a kid. And I want to now help these kids have that mentality. And hosting stages is something else. It's it just is. be the energy. It's the energy. And of course, I love doing my podcast. My goodness, just sitting down with these incredible people with beautiful stories is lovely. And it's a vibe. And I, I hope people get messages and benefit from those conversations. But you cannot break that human to human connection when, when you're reaching out to a mass number of people it's yeah. it's beautiful I, I really salute you for for actually saying that for uh, I me mean, personally for me as well it's always been hosting because there's a different uh, energy it's actually i want to say this right now it's actually one of my dreams to co-host with you a stage i'm just throwing it ah. out there it's one of my dreams like i want to you know, you like, like, you know, I want to, I want to introduce you. People crap, you know, like I want. It's one of my dreams. I've really thought about it before. And uh, oh, we have um, to make it happen. Because fam, again, l l let's go back in time when I first met you. Or the the the, the J J show. It was really just an amazing show. He called me yeah. on stage that day. Yes. And it was one of the most incredible feelings. I've, I I I keep messaging him. Like I'm like I can't believe what you did to me. Um. So, and you came on afterwards and, and you were very, very like, oh, you're radio, what's up? And it was, you know, you just incredible. Um, oh. But for the people- I actually, no, House, yeah. I actually want to talk about that. Sure. I actually want to talk about that because I was speaking to my dad today and my husband yesterday and I was like, oh, Big House is interviewing me and I'm so excited for this. And my dad was asking who you are. And I said, I will never, ever forget that day. And I'll tell you mm. why, because yeah, well. I have to salute you for this. And I have to just show you so much gratitude because you know, life is all about energy and the people that you meet and connect with. And I've never, ever forgotten you since that day because you went on that stage and you put your, like, you're all into it. You didn't hold back. You were just like, this is me. And, you know, it was emotional. All of us felt it. And I was like, I have to know this guy. Like, I have to be friends with this guy. And when we were talking backstage and stuff, like, you're just a beautiful soul. Oh, bless and, you, fam. And, Wallahi, wow. But since, Jay, yeah. Jay, I never spoke about this, like, before like that. The way he was talking to me, he has a, you know, he has a very, very calm, incredible <laughs> way about him. And yeah. Um, I think also, um, just to touch on this quickly, obviously my son is autistic and and after we had him and, and we figured out that he's autistic, we found out emotions started to come out, I think, easy for me. Like I came more emotional mm -hmm. than who I am. Like So mm -hmm. when, when Jay asked me to come on stage, I just, it was a really incredible moment. But thank you for everything that you said, fam. Look, it takes one to know one. And uh, we're going to play ping pong right now. We're going to say, yeah. but, but you know, we got to talk about the podcast. Man, oh man, everything yes. legit. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find it over here on, um, on Spotify. Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. like, I'm going to ask you some difficult questions right here. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. I wasn't mentally prepared for this. Uh, uh, sharing screen. Okay. Um, how do I share my screen right now? Okay. Well, one second. <laughs> you can, okay. right? Apparently I can't, but anyway, all good. Oh. We're going to, we're going we're gonna to put it right here. Uh, obviously okay. you're. Uh, you know your podcast everything legit the nimi meta meta meta, meta podcast um mm -hmm. when did you actually launch this I'm, I'm trying to see when when was it launched i launched it a week before my wedding so um be <laughs> that was beginning of september yeah wow. what was the first episode was it uh i'm just checking you right here the first episode was okay, okay i'm, getting I'm actually getting married yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was so interesting because like I said, uh, there was so many things. Can you imagine going through your mind a week before your wedding? And I was like, we've got to, we, we got to put this out there now. Like we just, there's no time to start like now, let's do it. And the first three episodes were super raw. I mean, the second that. episode was like yeah. crying is the I, new sleeping. And I, I love the fact that they're not also, you know, you're like they're between 18, 20 minutes, 17 minutes. It was really kind of, uh, you know, it, interesting to, 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 to see that uh, mm -hmm. but from from everyone that you've had on the show and I mean um, again you know this is a question I'm sure you get asked a lot I'm not gonna tell you who are your favorite but I'm gonna ask you who your favorite <laughs> ah, um, no, okay. Wow, okay let's play it in a different way if you want like who did you learn a lot from you know like you learn a lot and this is believe me when I tell you 
this is the reason why I'm doing this because every mm-hmm. single time I'm, I'm crossing, I think 55 episodes right now. The reason why I'm doing this is yes, I want to get to know uh, these incredible mm-hmm. people. Some of them I don't know as much. Uh, and and uh, actually, you you're one of them. Your story is so incredible. I see you on social media. That there is, you know, social media. You can't see everything, but then when you get mm-hmm. right now, I'm knowing you. It's just incredible. Yeah. So everything that you said, you 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 you, you touch people, um, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. But what was it about you? Obviously, and the podcast. What was it that you learned a lot from? Who was it? Who? Um, you know, it wasn't necessarily what they said and it was actually the energy and the presence that they gave me in their time and that was Liza Koshi oh I've seen that yeah that that was a great great energy yeah she's crazy Uh, I I tell you you know us as what we do we feed off energy right and like I said like when you when you see people who you've watched growing up again she was someone who I saw that was representing Mm. the brown girls out there and I was like wow and I remember seeing her content when I was doing my YouTube content I had nothing then and then meeting her you're always worried that they're never gonna be what you hoped they would be oh yeah that's yeah been there right can't name but yeah (laughs) <laughs> and you're kind of scared to meet them because you're like, oh, just please be nice. Please be nice. please be who who I think you are. And my goodness. Did she exceed girl, these expectations with you? More, everything and more. This this girl, like the energy, the she was so humble. She was so grateful that we were sitting down having conversations. I'm like, you're grateful? I'm grateful. And we connected on another level, wow. you know, our backgrounds and she mm. has a she has an Indian heritage as well. And you know, everything that she gave, she didn't have to give that much. Mm. She really didn't have to go deep into stories about, you know, her past and her family. She didn't have to give me that. She could have given me a generic media interview. Yeah. But but yeah. she sat and she and, and what I took away from that the most is, yeah, not the things that she said directly, but it was it was how I would like to conduct myself mm. moving forward and, and how I would like to keep an impact on people that I meet, just how Liza has has made on me. And I'm so conscious of that now. Like every single person I meet, I don't it doesn't matter who you are. You know, I, I walk into the supermarket and, you know, I, I see someone, I'm like, hi, how are you? And I'm not having a conversation with them. I'm just, hi, how are you? I'm so conscious of it because I'm like, you know, there's been times where I'm walking down the street, I see someone smiling, it makes me smile. So if I can do that for people, Uh, wow. See, again, fam, it's incredible. Every single thing that's coming out of your mouth right now is like, you know, jewels. Because we actually (laughs) have, we have a saying in in Islam, like, (laughs) smiling at your brother or sister's face is actually a, a, a good deed. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a, um, you know, so man. Um, all right. So I, I received your, your amazing, incredible bio, but this really, really got me. You toured the world as a professional junior tennis, pl- tennis player. Yeah. What? I need footage. I need a picture <laughs> You're holding a racket. I need, what? I can't, yeah. I can't believe it. Tennis? Who? Yeah. What? How? <laughs> I, I love tennis, but who did you? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Do you still play? How did you get into tennis? Who did you wish to watch? Tell us. It's so random, right? Like you would never think. No. And I actually no. think of I'm it reading, as a different... I'll be very honest. I'm reading the the bio, you know, and shout out to men. And like, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. And like, okay, that's amazing. I know that, I know that. And then, boom. Let me tour the world as a professional junior tennis player representing <laughs> Great Britain. I'm like, what? Yo. I know. It's so, It's. it actually feels like a different lifetime. <laughs> It feels like it was in my past life that I did this because from the age of 13 all the way through to 18, I was representing my country, playing tournaments around the world. And when I I was homeschooled, like I didn't have time to go to school because I was missing so many things because I was traveling, my training. Oh my goodness. When I tell you, like we were not messing around. Like the goal was to make- I I gotta ask you, backhand was one hand or two hands? It was two hands. Oh, dope. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, because, you know, everyone's two hand. If only you had that skill with the, the one, one hand. The one hand was this maybe a bit cool. But who did you look up to, like, watching? Who did you watch? Um, there was uh, Anna Ivanovich, who's retired oh, now. Yeah. But this sounds ridiculous. She just had, lo- like, seriously tan skin. She's Serbian, but she had really tan skin. So I was yeah. like, oh, my God, my girl. Um, but 
uh, I, I actually looked at the male players yeah. because I was like, I want to be as good as a male player. Uh, but it was, it felt like a different lifetime. I was training from 5 a.m. all the way through to 9 p.m. every That's... single day. And you still it play? Was intense. No. That, you I, haven't played I, in a while? <laughs> I haven't. I, I literally have not picked up a racket. And I think mm. this is because there's some <laughs> emotional, mental walls up with that. Which I mean, when maybe when we're in the car, we'll get into that a yeah. bit more with the club. Yeah. But that, that you know, it, it wasn't an easy ride for me those mm. years. You know, I, I was a teenager, and I was also like, but I'm not. I'm missing out on friends and being out mm. as well. I was so torn between the two worlds. Wow. And so it was serious would, for you. Like you, you were taking, oh, you were representing your country. That's incredible. And wow. So serious, and more than anything, I think as well for kids your parents' dreams and expectations are on your shoulders, right? Mm. And not that they ever pressured me. They just saw one day I was good at tennis and then they were like, well, let's make this a thing. And my dad is is a sporty guy and he was so passionate about it. He would, he, he's a CEO and he would like give up his own time to travel around the world with me to make sure I'm good and wow. I'm safe. Wow, bless And mm. there was pressure on me because I was like, I don't want to let my dad down. If I stop this or if I'm not good, I don't want to let my dad down. And eventually I did stop and I made this, the decision to go into university and do journalism. Uh, but it was truly another life. He says to this day, he was like, if you kept at it, you would have made it. You would have made it to number one. Um, but I made the decision We're, and yeah. learned so many things then. But just thinking about it right now, really, like if you really, th if you really continued, you'd, you'd have a different life right now. Like we'd see you on the screen and like. <laughs> so different, so different. And I actually think I would have still remained uh, so much of an introvert as well. Because when you're on tour, these girls, like they're cutthroat. My goodness, they don't hold back. Like they're horrible. And I remember that's why I felt like kind of bullied on tour. And like mm. these girls, I didn't really have a click. All these girls would travel together. I just had my dad and I just like, now I look back, I'm like, wow, my life would have been so different. And I God genuinely- God bless you fam. What a beautiful yeah. soul you are. Seriously. Oh, it's, it's just, uh, it, wow. It, you know, like you respect somebody and now the bar, yo, you know, this is just, uh, <laughs> just incredible. Uh, wow, man. I, I, I'm just overblown right now with the fact that you said that. Um, yeah. Okay. So we can play tennis right now. One on one. Oh, well, we'll play. I'm not sure how it's going to go. Yeah. Everyone says to me like, play me, play me, let's go. I'm like, I don't know. But I reckon muscle memory would get back in and, uh, there's yeah. always that you don't want to disappoint yourself because you used to be so good. Yeah, truth. Yeah. Uh, truth. Uh, okay, I want to talk to you about something that I always talk about and it's a subject that always gets to it. It has nothing to do with radio, it has nothing to do with, you know, podcasts. It's just something, which mm -hmm. is the following. Exposure. A lot of people, a lot of brands right now, especially, are reaching out to artists, local artists, regional artists, and yeah, hey, come jump on my, you know, you know, brand, perform for free because we are all facing a, a difficult time. And mm -hmm. it's such a it's such a topic amongst artists and singers and rappers in in, in the scene, mm -hmm. especially in Dubai right now. It's 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 a lot of talk. Brands, big brands, are reaching out, and yeah. you know they're not offering some sort of any compensation. They're like, come, we're gonna give you exposure. Artists mm -hmm. are like, hey, I can't take exposure to the bank. Can't do this. I have more followers than you. What are you talking about? So mm -hmm. where do you stand uh, as as someone who's you Nimi and someone who has your own media also content? Where do you stand in all this debate? Uh, I, it's such a tough, it it, it, there's such a tough line, isn't it? And it's such a blurred line as well, because you're like, should I, shouldn't I? And then it's an opportunity and you're like, am I turning down an opportunity? There's this internal guilt and, you know, I just, I'm so conscious right now. And this is a decision that I made as well, is that I have to value the work that I put out because if I don't value it, no one is going to. Mm -hmm. Even you know, if that means you lose this opportunity. Exactly, exactly. I think value overrides opportunity because I, I, I just, I think that's, if that's how you make your career consciously and you make these decisions, that is what you should live by because, you know, you got to believe in yourself. You're doing what you're doing as an artist. I mean, these local artists are suffering right now. Like mm. they, they're literally like, you know, they, they don't get to go to their, their, their gigs, which was like their income or, you know, these DJs that mm. aren't able to do what they do every night. They're struggling and 
yeah, you know, you will have moments where you're like, I have to do sometimes just do what I have to do to put food on the table. Mm. Or, and, and at times you're like, I mean, hopefully that exposure will lead to something else. You know, when brands say, oh, um, yeah. this could lead to future opportunities or a, a further relationship with the brand. I'm like, but Get are you going to sign here. a contract? <laughs> like, are we going to sign a contract and agree that, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think we, we have to, no matter what industry you're in, but artists especially be so conscious of that. The love, the sweat, the blood that you put into your music and your work ha has taken time, it's taken energy, and there's so much value on it that you shouldn't just be giving it away for nothing. One day, you know, some people will appreciate it for, yeah. for more than what you uh, even thought it was yeah. valued at. And that's a, exactly a message I want, you know, my, especially my followers, my people, the, the artists that follow me to, to know. Uh, now me media. So, mm -hmm. wow. Um, it's your own me media uh, content company. Like, tell us more yeah. about it. Yeah, so I only recently just started it, but I, I have this such this love for creating content and you know I, I have this vision of like a multimedia strategy and like putting together stuff whether it's for individuals or brands but I really wanted to create a platform that I can put my my I guess I'm in front of the camera and on the mic but when you're not I, wa I want to put those skills to use, you know, wow. editing, mm. all of this like media strategy that I have in my mind. I really want to do that for companies and maybe even collaborate as the entity of Nimi Meta and, you know, what Now Me Media offers as well. And, you know, I, I just, I, I, there's, there's a lot of people doing that out there, but I just, I want to do it my way. And, um, and I also thought like, you know what, I could be hiring so many people out there to like, you know, there's these agencies and stuff that could, they're like, oh, we'd love to represent you. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, cool. But will you, will you be up at midnight at one o'clock doing my stuff for me when I need you to be doing it for me? Bless. No, you won't. So I need to create a team and a company within myself to make that happen. Wow. Man, I, mm. I would definitely wish you all the best with this one. Um, it's Thank a tough you. question. Um, um, is your phone next to you, around you, or uh, are you yes. broadcasting from? Okay. <laughs> it's like, Got okay. it. It's always uh, next to me. Uh, Music-wise, what does you know um, Nimi listen to? Like, just take us through the your playlist. Like, what what kind of music do you actually? Uh. Listen to? I know it's diverse. You know, obviously, you're you're a radio also presenter, and you know, you you have this amazing, incredible personality. I am just mm -hmm. really kind of intrigued right now. Like, what do you listen to? Yeah, I'm like, I, me, I'm just like straight up hip hop and R&B. Like, Damn. I'm that girl. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm that girl. Like, I was up till 3 a.m. last night watching the Luda, Luda. Nelly. Who yeah. do you think won? <laughs> oh, Luda, hands down. Oh, hands down, oh, okay. Not even if Nelly's Wi-Fi was working, Yo. it would have been Luda. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think Nelly played it wrong as well. The play, see the business mind of this one. Like, he played a lot of things early. He should have mm -hmm. let it, yeah. Ludicrous, yeah, you can yeah. see Luda's a lot more switched on, yeah? Yes, yes, with yes, all of you, you can see that, yeah. Yeah, but I and I, I love my R&B, like my Kehlani and oh, uh, Sinead Aiko, like that oh. soul R&B, that hits me. Um, So it's that and then a lot of Bollywood stuff. Amazing. I'm actually crazy into my my religious songs at the moment. Okay. I'm Hindu Bless. and, um, you know, these Bollywood movies, yes, they have these over-the-top, you know, songs all the time, but there's these beautiful, meaningful, slow songs that literally just get you in a bit of a trance sometimes. So I've been mm. listening to that a lot lately because of everything that's going on in the world and, yeah. you know, just bringing me peace of mind. So it really just varies, but my go-to always is hip hop, R&B, and then like UK, like grime, like, Oh man. I'm like Jay Haas. Like, what? I, I, I just love that stuff. It just, it gets me in the mood, you know, before I'm about to go out, go out on stage mm. or if I'm in the car on the way to a meeting, like that, that's my go to to get me pumped. Yeah. Wow. That, yo, <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. I love, I love this. A um, couple more questions for you, uh, Nimi. I'm really enjoying this. Um, when it comes to, um, supporting local artists on radio. And I know I've had this discussion with many radio heads in the UAE, big, small, yeah. I've had it. You know, I've had it on, on a personal level, I've had it on an yeah. offline level. How do you, because when you go to the UK, like, you know, Georgia Smith, they still call her homegrown. <laughs> like yeah. Georgia Smith, right? one yeah. of the biggest stars on the planet. Like, you know, right now, you know, so uh, especially in the UK, the homegrown kind of is there. With us, the local, it has a very negative connotation. I feel I love the word local, but again, when you when I say it even to artists, hey, don't call me local, man. You know, I'm I'm halas, I'm I'm bigger. 
because mm. you know they were put in a position where local always means ah let's get a local guy we pay him like two hundred dollars you know he'll he'll do it for free this is the kind of vibe that they've been mm -hmm. experiencing through. but local is you know you're from you're in the city you know that's mm -hmm. what it means but yeah. how do you in what ways do you think radio and media can support these guys more like the brothers and brothers and sisters that are really working really hard to put the music and put it out there I think there's just not enough like emphasis on it there's mm. there's you know okay so when you sit down at a meeting it's never even a uh, a conversation to be honest mm. um you know within the radio industry i because i'm on a breakfast show yeah. i think it's a lot different because yeah. you know we the way we program and conduct our breakfast show is very different to how the other shows do it um however i know sure. that you know consciously on our channel Four evenings show yeah. you know they've really really tried to get local artists I love on that. yeah yeah, yeah. And, and celebrate them because who else is going to you know mm. also in, in our in, in the uae we don't have many media platforms in terms of like tv isn't huge it's radio is like the go-to every single morning you know the True. culture of being in the car on the way to work stuck in traffic it's radio yeah. all yeah. day every day and so yeah that's definitely been a conscious decision in terms of music and even playing their music in the evenings mm. i i want to understand how to break that even that mentality though mm. right so like why why is it the local artist should only be played on like the drive time show or the evening show why is yeah. that like why? why not first time on on, on breakfast Yo, it, let's go not even a, i love yeah. that yeah. yeah. What? Why can't we break that barrier now? Now that we've got it on drive and evenings, why can't we push it? I love more? that. I, I love that you said like, that. Mm. Yeah. I guess it's. I, I mean, from my personal experience, I don't actually get any local artists hitting me up. Hmm. I, I I don't get any DMs. I don't get any emails like, "Hey, I've got this." Well, it's going to change after just this. Check it out. I'm just saying. I hope so. I really do hope so because I I have the couple that I have had. I have. 100% passed it on to the evening show or my program director and I've been like listen like this is a new art mm. uh oh one second facing technical difficulties right here we'll cut for a second but it's all good she don't come back <laughs> I'm actually gonna put 12. this in. okay one second yeah you're, oh. you're froze for a second so <laughs> oh are we back <laughs> we're back now we're good. okay yeah um you yeah, know, I, I as you. a presenter, you yeah. you take it you take it on board and you take it as a responsibility. But I don't know I don't know if this is this applies to you, but yeah. you know I also I, want local artists to understand that you know presenters don't have full creative control. Guys, you know the singer songwriters rappers right here, hit her up, man. She's just incredible and and big up to Channel Four. I'm not just saying that. I I, I really genuinely listen um, to 104.8 um, FM. It's, a, it's a, I'm not just saying that. Seriously, I listen. You know. Um, yeah. No. And you know what? Like, please do DM me. Like, I, I don't think I get enough for what what the artists out there like just send your stuff through we do listen to it it's not just a dead end like do send it through and we'll send it through to whoever we've got to uh send it through to to make things happen amazing. I guess. amazing um Nimius, again it's been a pleasure uh, i think my last question would be how um when you're going to schools especially you touched on that and i love that and speak um, ha have you got a feedback from a parent or or or, or someone in school like a girl or a boy that that kind of impacted you whether it's really simple kind of kind of changed like whoa something that you can share with us like this is what i'm doing i need to keep doing because it's it's really impacting people yeah it's it's mostly the young girls uh, and i say this again just because obviously they they might see themselves in me and i yeah. see myself in them and the DMs that I get, and you know, I also I, I would, I, I'd like to point out that when they DM me, I make sure I message every single one back, and I'm like, listen, anything you need, like, let me know. I had this girl that uh, was at one of my smaller talks, and she was like, I really want to do what you're doing, and I'm, I, I just, it's just my dream, and I really want to do it. I'm like, here is my email, here is my WhatsApp number, let's make it happen, like, let's get you in the studio, what? and let's get you an internship, like. Really? What's stopping any of us from doing that? You gave her Nothing. a chance, though. Yeah, I mean, I gave yeah. her a chance, mm. and, and <laughs> unfortunately, she didn't follow it up. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm here. Like, I'm conscious yeah. of that because I wish someone had done that for me. You know, mm. uh, and so I think that 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 just impacted me so much because also it's making you realize. Look, you underestimate yourself sometimes. Even mm. me doing what I do, I'm like, oh, it's, I don't do. It's not that big deal what I do. 
Uh, but when you have these people yeah. that, and these kids, that's just the most important thing. And that's why I'm kind of like mad with all everything that's going on in the world right now. Because March and April, I was booked for schools. Wow. And that yeah. was just yeah. like me wanting to give workshops and my free time to, to show people how it's done and how they can do it. So... It, it just, when they say just stuff like, I see, I can do this. I, I see myself in you. I'm like, wow. Wow. Like that is just priceless. That is invaluable. And that to me, like job done um, with the message that I'm trying to portray. So I'm just going to keep, keep doing it. I think. Mashallah. Um, what's the most challenging period of your life in, up to now? Mm. It was, it was a, it was, I think it was my change of identity. Hmm. from tennis to journalism that was a huge thing for me um that yeah, transition we need to going talk more back. about it in, in, in the buckle up part two because oh, that 100. was really big it, it seems you know for you yeah yeah one that that and i'm talking about transitions and it was me moving to the uae as well three to four years ago i've changed so much since then and you know, that transition, you feel like you're letting people down because you're not the old you anymore. You're not trying to please people anymore because you're trying to do you. And you're like, there's there's selfish and then there's selfless. And I'm trying to find the in-between. Nice. Wow. And so, yeah, yeah. That, that would say um, that. Okay. Um, so your, your parents are watching this right now and this mm -hmm. is for them. What do you tell them? Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Well... You know, I would say to my mom and dad, and I, I actually am very vocal about this all the time, but I love myself because of the way you love me. And I believe in myself because of the way you believe in me from day one. I have never, ever, ever um, had to waver on my journey or on my path because of how you've envisioned my path for me and allowed me to be me and allowed me to do what I love. And I will, I mean, try the rest of my life to pay you back for that wow um and your family like you have sisters right one sister yeah one sister god bless her what do you tell her yeah. ah <laughs> my goodness my she's three years younger than me but she acts like my big sister i tell you um <laughs> i would say to her that she's super wise and she's she's my rock oh my goodness I, and, and i also want to say to her that she my sister's in um in she's a humanitarian so Mashallah. everything that she does mm. is to give back to the community and raise awareness and you know everything that she puts in is just the, i actually look up to her because i wish i could do what she does um, we'll, we'll, so, yeah. we'll put whatever link like in the bio and you know for people to follow for sure wow yeah. bless um you're one and only uh, your husband what do you tell him <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> uh first of all do the bed because it's really frustrating <laughs> <laughs> We're in a long distance marriage. This I swear is the first I didn't mean that, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I would just say, like, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes because, mm. you know, what he look, he says to me, like, I look up to you, but I'm like, I look up to you because to stand side by side with me and support your wife in moving across the world and her following her dreams, it takes a strong man to do that. So I'm grateful. Wow. Something that not a lot of people know about Nimi, and it can be tennis, because that obviously a lot of people right know. What what do uh, something that you can share us that not a lot of people know about Nimi? <sighs> what do they not know about me? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I I don't know if this is something they don't know. I don't actually like leaving the house or going to events. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm. Okay. I will if I have an option to stay at home. You stay at home. I'm I'm taking that because you know we like I said earlier we get invited to these events and yes. you know all of this stuff I'm just not made for that life I, wow. I've been to these events where okay. people are like how do I explain it super bougie yeah. truth and I, <laughs> yeah I'm with you I'm I'm, just, I'm, the, I'm the same you know I actually de decline I don't they don't even call me anymore <laughs> yeah. I'm like you know what S stay at home with me let's sit one on one and have deep conversations I don't want to go to this event love with that. you so love that. I don't know um, it may look like I love to do that but it's mostly because I'm forced to with my friends most of the time fam you're amazing one hour went by real fast I want to thank you uh, for your time what's coming up for, for Nimi what can we expect any any podcast guests that you can share with us knowing that this yeah. will be out like in like four or five days 
Yeah, well, uh, today I just launched a brand new episode with John Lee. I don't know if you've heard yeah. of him. CEO, so, a lot of legend, entrepreneur, yeah. uh, such a good guy, a friend of mine. And we had an hour long conversation. You know, he, uh, his, his journey is incredible from mm. a guy that was literally like cutting vegetables in, his, in their parents' Chinese restaurant to mm. becoming a self-made millionaire at 27. Um, so that episode, I really hope for a lot of people right now as well who have lost their jobs due to the current situation, who are unemployed, feel lost and confused. I really, really hope this episode can help because, um, you know, being fired and not mm. being attached to a company is not the end. And, and this is what me and John were really stressing on uh, and really just living a life that you deserve. So that episode yeah. is out today. Um, please do check it out. Uh, it's available on all podcast platforms. And Love that. yeah, I mean, I'm just looking forward to life getting back to normal, I guess, and getting back to Dubai and getting on the show again. Amazing. Bless you. Can you say your social media? We're going to put it right here. Yeah. At the Nimi Meta. That's it. Perfect. Uh, peace of love. Thank you so much for your time, fam. May Allah bless you. Uh, really, I, I look up to you. And right now, when I got when I got to know you even more, I, I respect and love what you do. Shout out to your family. I think it's, it's really incredible. Um, and big up, big up. Uh, peace and love, you guys. Like and subscribe. And please follow the sister. And if you're if you're a local artist out there, hit the head up, man. Like, come on, let's let's play some music on, on the breakfast show. Uh, yes. peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam. Yo, that was wow. Oh, I love that. Thank you I so much. Could have much. gone extra. You're incredible. Sorry if I took much of your time, Wallahi. But yeah. No, not at um, all. It flew by. I didn't even realize. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're, you're incredible. So we we'll work on it and and hopefully, hopefully it'll be out like maybe in four or five days. I'll let you know before. I'll, I'll also mm -hmm. send you a link where you can watch it, you know, uh, privately if you want. And then mm -hmm. we can, we can uh, proceed. Thank you so much, fam. Amazing. Um, Thank you so much for your time. Bless you. Bless you. Thank um, you. Take give me, care. Give me a fist bump. Like, let's go virtual. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. All right. Peace. Oh, peace. Thank and you. I hope I get to see you soon. Um, be safe and uh, take care of yourself. We're proud of you. Thank that's you. all I can say. We're very thank proud you. of you. Keep going. And uh, God bless, fam. Thank you, House. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye.